Hello, everyone. Let's talk Second John real quick. I want to go back and kind of set what, what is probably happening here historically that might make John's um, first letter and therefore second letter make a little bit more uh, sense. John is actually um, responding. If you notice in First John, you're going to see this theme of, of truth or light, love and uh, false teachers. There's like this cycle that goes on and, and John's hitting this um, cycle uh, several times throughout the book. And when you read Second John, you see the same thing. You see truth, you see love, and you see um, false teachers that take place, false teaching that takes place, um, and a warning against it. And and so um, some of the things that J John actually says in this book might make a little bit more sense when you understand um, the historical background. Now, I know that a, a lot of people have connected First John to Gnosticism, and, and I think that we need to be a bit careful there. Um, here's why. Uh, the reality is, is that Gnosticism didn't take place until the second and third century. It wasn't fully developed until the second and third century. Um, however, the idea of dualism, that there was a separation between what is spiritual and what is material, certainly had um, its place in the first century where John was writing. And certainly, there, so there's these pre-Gnostic ideas that are um, forming um, in the church in the first century that I believe Paul is, or uh, John is addressing. And one of the reasons I, I say that, we have a connection to one of the early church fathers, Irenaeus. He, um, in his book Against Heresies, he talks about this um, man, let me get his name. His, ma his name is uh, Serenthus. Um, at least that's what I think the pronunciation is. But Serenthus is, uh, is a false teacher that was in the church during the time of John. And uh, Irenaeus, um, he talks about uh, this, this account of um, Serenthus coming into the bathhouse in Ephesus one time when John was there and John making uh, a comment. But then Irenaeus goes and outlines what uh, Serenthus actually believes. And he believes that there's this separation between um, Jesus, the man, and Christ, who is the divine being. And, and so he believes that Christ descended on Jesus, the man, who was a, who was a spiritual and wise man, um, but he descended on Jesus at baptism and then um, left Jesus, the man, before the crucifixion. And so the, the person who died on the cross was Jesus, the man, not Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And, and so certainly there is um, a disconnect there between what is spiritual and what is material. And because of that, there, the implications were such that you focus on what is spiritual and you can let go of what is physical. And so uh, you have this appearance of being very spiritual, almost mystic, yet ethics and morality can and what you do in the body doesn't really matter which lends itself to um, immorality um, of all kinds and so as john is addressing false teachers and this and i believe he's addressing this dualism that's taking place in the church it's beginning to form these pre-gnostic ideas that are beginning to form that the that the spiritual is good, the, the flesh is evil, so it really doesn't matter what you do in the flesh. Um, as John is addressing that, he's using um, very specific words, like, you know, if you deny that Jesus is the Christ, uh, there is no separation between them. They're together. They're, they're perfectly united. This idea that um, if you, if you, um, are obedient to the commands, then you then you have the Father. If you 
if you are um, pursuing Christ in, in, in your body, you're being obedient to what he has said, then um, you have the, the, um, the father or you have the son. Um, and, and so let me, let me go there. Let me read the passage in second John. Maybe this will make uh, a little bit uh, more sense to you. Okay. Here we go. And so um, he goes on. Let me, let me go back to verse four. He says, I rejoice greatly when I find some, um, to find some of your children walking in the truth, okay? Um, so there's, John's affirming this, this thought that, yes, I'm rejoicing some of your children are walking in the truth. And he's talking to the church. I believe at Ephesus, I think that's where it, it probably is addressed to, but it doesn't say so. Um, but he's talking to a local church that he knows. And just as we were, commanded by the Father. And now I ask you, dear lady, dear lady, meaning the church, not a specific lady, okay? Um, not as though I were writing you a new command, but a new, but one we have heard from the beginning that we love one another. You see this idea again of, uh, of truth um, being highlighted and love being highlighted here. And, uh, and he goes, and this is love. What is it that's love? Hmm. That we walk according to his commandments. So how you behave in the body matters as you walk um, according to his commandments. You're actually um, demonstrating that you love um, not just God, but I think in particular right here, one another. Um, and then he, he goes on and he says, uh, this is the commandment, uh, just as you have heard from the beginning, so that you should walk in it. Um, for many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do, um, those who do not confess, um, those who do not confess the coming of Jesus in the flesh, such a one is a deceiver and the antichrist. Wow, what strong words. But again, now you see this idea coming to light that they don't confess the coming of Jesus in the flesh, Jesus Christ in the flesh. You see this union, and it's they're perfectly united from the very beginning. It didn't come, the Christ part of Jesus didn't come at baptize, uh, baptism. Jesus is the eternal son of God who came in the flesh, 100% um, human, 100% divine, and lived this life, died as the son of God, was crucified, and rose again victoriously as the son of God, ascended, is still the son of God, and will be the son of God forever, all right? So um, those that do not confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh, they're, they're a deceiver, they're antichrist. And so he says, watch yourselves so that you may not lose what we've worked for, but may win a full reward. Everyone who goes on and does not abide in the teachings of Christ, in other words, what you're doing in the body, as you're walking, as you're practicing um, what Jesus is teaching, if you don't do this, you don't abide in the teachings of Christ, you don't have God. And then he says, whoever abides in the teaching um, has both the Father and the Son. And so uh, the idea here is one that's first negative, that everyone who doesn't abide in the teaching of Christ, they don't have God. But the positive way of saying that is whoever abides in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. And if anyone comes to you and does not bring his teaching, do not receive him. This is how serious this is for John. Uh, don't allow this false teaching about the person and nature of Jesus Christ, which affects how you walk, um, how you practice your faith. Don't let that into your church. Don't let it into your home. Um, and, and so, because the implication is that you will become part of their wickedness and what they're trying to do to deceive um, the elect. And so, 
that is uh, what's going on, I believe, in First John, but particularly here in Second John. Second John is really just kind of a, uh, a reiteration, short reiter reiteration of what uh, First John was all about. It's like, okay, truth is important. Love one another. Stay away from false teachers. Um, that is true today as well. Father, thank you so much for um, the warning that you have given us in Scripture to be careful about what teachings about Jesus we allow into our church, into our homes, into our lives. Father, help us to um, be watchful, um, to watch our life and our doctrine closely so that, uh, Father, we are, will not fall down into a, um, a place of, of, of false teaching about who you are. Um, Father, help us to uh, live by the truth that you have clearly taught in your word. Empower us by your spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless. Thank you for um, watching this video.